In today's machine learning class, we will see the second part of future subset selection. And here we will discuss the measure of future relevance and redundancy. So in today's class, we will see the measures of future relevance and the measures of future redundancy. Under this, we will see the correlation based measures, distance based measures and other coefficient based measures. And in the next class, we will see the overall future selection process. Let us see all those things one by one. First, let us see the measures of future relevance. Okay, here the future relevance is based on amount of information contributed by a future. Okay, so for solving our problem, how much information will be provided by a particular future that is called as future relevance. Okay, when come to supervised learning, the mutual information is decided by the value of class label. Okay, the mutual information is very important. That should be calculated as mi of c comma f, which is equal to h of c plus h of f minus h of c comma f. Right? The marginal entropy of class. Entropy is nothing but the value. Otherwise, okay. The marginal entropy of class h of c. H of c, which is equal to summation of i equal to 1 to n, sorry, 1 to k. P of C i log to P of C i. Right? Similarly, the marginal entropy of future x, h of f which is equal to minus summation of C, P of f equal to x log to P of f equal to x. Okay? Here, k, this k which is equal to number of classes. Number of classes. And C, here, C is the, C is nothing but the class variable. Class variable. And F is nothing but, C F is here. This is nothing but the future set that take the discrete values. That is the discrete number of futures. When come to un unsupervised learning, the entropy of future is calculated for all the futures. That is all the futures in data set. And then the futures are ranked in descending order. Descending order means based on the value, the highest value will be placed in first position and next highest value likewise and the lowest future that is valued future will be placed in the last position. Right? And the, based on the information gained from the futures and top beta percentage of futures are selected as relevant futures. That is the top ranked features are selected for our uh, problem. Right? Here, the entropy of future F is calculated by, uses, by using Shannon's formula. H of F which is equal to minus summation of X, P of F equal to X log to P of F equal to X. Here, uh, summation of X is used only for the future that takes discrete value. Okay. We need to select the futures which is having only the discrete value. And next let us see the measures of future redundancy. Future redundancy means uh, similar information may be contributed by more number of futures. Okay. Multiple futures are having similar information. Hence, we need to remove those redundant futures. Okay, for this, three different types of measures are there for the uh, identifying future redundancy. First one is correlation based measures and second one is distance based measures and third one is other coefficient based measures. Okay, let us see those things one by one. The first one is correlation based similarity measure. Okay, this type of measure uh, is used to measure the dependency, that is the linear dependency between two random variables. Right? So, for this purpose, we can use correlation based similarity measure, that is the linear dependency between two random variables. For this, we can use the Pearson's product movement. Okay? This correlation coefficient is used to measure the correlation between two random variables, F1 and F2. 
right? F1 and F2 are nothing but the future variables, randomly selected future variables. Okay, and the formula for the Pearson correlation coefficient is alpha equal to covariance of F1 comma F2 divided by root of variance of F1 dot variance of F2. Right, here the covariance of F1 and F2 which is equal to summation of F1 minus F1 bar into F2 minus F2 bar. Here F1 is the value of future 1 and F1 bar is the mean of F1. Right, simultaneously the F2 means value of future 2 and F2 bar means the mean of future 2. Right. When come to variance of F1, this is summation of F1 minus F1 bar whole square and variance of F2 which is equal to summation of F2 minus F2 bar whole square, right? Here the computer correlation value that should lies between plus 1 and minus 1. Okay, if the computer value is plus 1, plus 1 then those two variables that is F1 and F2 are directly proportional to each other, directly proportional to each other. That is, if F1 value increased, then F2 value should also be increased. If F1 value decreased, then F2 value should also be decreased. Okay. This is plus 1 value. If the value is minus 1, then those two are uh, inversely proportional to each other. Okay. That means if F1 value increase, then F2 value will get decreased. If F2 decrease, then F1 should also be, that is F1 will be increased. Those two are uh, inversely proportional to each other. If the relation value is 0, that is the computer correlation value is 0, then there is no linear relationship. That is there is no relationship between F1 and F2, future 1 and future 2. Those two are independent to each other. Independent to each other. That is, there is no relationship between F1 and F2. Right? So, if relation value is 0. Generally, all future selection problems, a threshold value is adopted. Okay? And this threshold value is used to decide whether two futures have adequate similarity or not. So, in our problem, if the value is 0, then there should not be any relation between those two futures, F1 and F2, right? The second one is distance-based similarity measure. Okay, uh, for this... The most popular one is Euclidean distance measure. Uh, the formula for this Euclidean measure is d of f1 comma f2 which is equal to root of summation of i equal to 1 to n f1 minus f2 whole square. Okay, here f1 and f2 are the futures of n dimensional data set. So, the data set have two futures. Uh, for example, the first one is aptitude and second one is communication. See, this is aptitude and this is communication. Okay. So, the Euclidean distance between these two futures are calculated by using this formula. By using this formula, right. So, F1 minus F2 first computed. After that, F1 minus F2 whole square. Then finally, the sum of those uh, values which is equal to 81.78. The general form of Euclidean distance is uh, Minkowski distance and uh, the formula is the same formula. Uh, d of f1 comma f2 which is equal to root of i equal to 1 to n f of f1 minus f2 whole power r. Okay. If r value equal to 2, then this is called as Euclidean distance. If r value is 1, then this is called as Manhattan distance. Manhattan distance means, see, there is no root here. If there is, ro if there is root, then we have to square these values, isn't it? If there is no root, then this is called as 
one third distance. And next, let us see how to identify the distance between two binary vectors. See, for this, we can use the Hamming distance. Okay, let us see one example for this Hamming distance. Uh, we are having two vectors, the values uh, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. And the second vector is 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay, then the difference between these two vectors are 3. That means this is the first vector and this is the second vector. And if the values are different, okay, that is the first value is 0, second value is 1, then this is count, computed as the difference. Okay. And here the first value is 1 and second value is 0. This is second. And here the first value is 1, second value is 0. Right? This is third difference. So, the distance is 3. Right? And now let us see other similarity measures. For this, we will see the Jacquard index coefficient. So, the Jacquard index or coefficient is used to measure the similarity between two features. Okay? Uh, when come to Jacquard distance, so this is the dissimilarity between two features. That is, the complementary of Jacquard index is called as Jacquard distance. Right? First, we have to compute the Jacquard index by using the formula J equal to N11 divided by N01 plus N1110 plus N11. See here, N11 means the number of cases where both futures have the value 1, 1. Okay. Both the future value 1, 1. So, how many 1, 1 is there in both the vectors? And 0, 1 means the number of cases where future 1 has 0 value and future 2 has 1 value. Okay. Here, 0 should be there and here 1 should be there. 0, 1. How many 0, 1 are there? And the third one is 1, 0, n, 1, 0. That means the number of cases, future 1 has 1 value. See, 1 has 1 value and 2 has 0 value. Here, 0. This is 1, this is 0. This is 1, this is 0. How many cases are like this? Right? So, the Jacquard distance, uh, dj, which is equal to 1 minus j. Because this is the complementary of Jacquard index. Isn't it? So, dj which is equal to 1 minus j. Let us give an example. Here two futures f1 and f2 which are having the values 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. See? 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Right? And the second vector, this one. That is 1, 1, 0, uh, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. Right? So, this is vector 1. That is feature 1 and this is feature 2. Now, we need to compute the n11, n01, n10 and n11. n11 means both the future have the one value. See, 1, 2. Two values are there. Right? And next one is n01 we need to compute. First feature is 0 and second feature is 1. So, this one, only 1 is there. Okay. So, 1. And next one is N10, isn't it? So, first value is 1 and second value is 0. So, here and here, 2. 2 are there. See, 2. And N11 is already 2. The value is 2 by 5, which is otherwise called as 0 0.4. Okay, so this is J value, that is Jacquard coefficient. Now, we need to find the Jacquard distance. Jacquard distance means this is the complement of coefficient, that is 1 minus J, which is DJ, that is Jacquard distance, which is equal to 0 0.6, that is 1 minus 0 0.4, which is equal to 0 0.6. Now, let us see the... Uh, simple matching coefficient that is SMC which is other method to identify the distance between two vectors. This is almost equal to Jacquard coefficient but it includes the number of cases where both futures have the value 0 that is N00. 
So n zero zero is included in both the sides. Okay. Now, for example, the future one is zero one one zero one zero one zero, and future two is one one zero zero one triple zero, right? And uh, the SMC of future one and future two, which is equal to n one one plus n zero zero divided by n zero zero plus n zero one plus n one zero plus n one one. Okay, n one one two five. So this one and this one. N zero zero R three. See, one two and three. Okay, so n zero zero is three and n zero one. So here zero and here one. Okay, only one future is there. That is only one difference and n 10 is 2 10 10 and this is 10 okay 2 and n 11 is 2 already we have computed this okay which is equal to 1 by 2 or 0.5 and next let us see the cosine similarity cosine means cos isn't it so the cos similarity of two different futures x comma y which is equal to x dot y divided by Uh, determinant of x dot determinant of y where x dot y which is equal to the vector dot product of x and y that is summation of y equal to 1 to n x i y i all the values of x will be uh, added into all the value of y right and the determinant of x which is equal to the summation of y equal to 1 to n x i square simultaneously determinant of y equal to summation of y equal to 1 to n y i square okay here n value is common in all the places because in the data set in the data set we have taken any two feature and the number of records in both the features are absolutely same and let us see one example for this question similarity X equal to two four zero zero two one three zero zero and Y value which is equal to two one zero zero three two one zero one. Okay, now X dot Y which is equal to these two values will be multiplied. Okay, the value is ninety and determinant of X which is equal to five point eight three and determinant of Y which is equal to four point four seven. Now Cos of x comma y, which is equal to 19 divided by 5.83 into 4.47, which is equal to 0.729. Here, the cosine similarity is actually measures the angle between two vectors, that is x and y. Okay, the computed value is one, then the angle between x and y is zero. That means both X and Y lies on the same axis, X Y, right? That means the values are same except to the magnitude. And if cosine similarity is zero, then the angle between X and Y is 90 degree. Okay, this is X and this is Y, perpendicular to each other. That means there is no similarity. That means both are different. And they are completely independent to each other, right? When come to our example, based on our value, the degree is forty-three point two. Okay, so this is x and this is y value. So far, we have seen the part two of future subset selection, that is measures of future relevance and measures of future redundancy. Okay. So when come to measures of future redundancy, we have seen the correlation-based measures and distance-based measures and other coefficient-based measures. And in the next class, we will see the overall future selection process, right? And for more information, please go through your textbook. Thank you.